Okay, praise the Lord. We thank the Lord for allowing us to be here another time. We are commencing our study for today. Last week we start a new book. We start studying the book of Genesis. And today we'll pick up, pick up where we left off from last time. I think we'll pick up in verse 6, Genesis chapter 1. We bow our heads in prayer. Gracious Father, we thank you for allowing us to be here another time as we congregate together in your sanctuary, Lord. We pray that your presence will fill this place. Your anointing will, oh God, just descend upon us, oh God, in the form of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, discernment, revelation, Lord. Make yourself known to us. Pour out your spirit upon your people as we come together today, Lord. Oh, Lord, we pray that your presence will fill this place even as we open up Holy Scriptures to study today, oh God. Those who are on their way, bring them safely. Let this be a, a joyous time as we congregate today in the house of the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, your son, we ask these favors. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. All right, so we are in Genesis chapter 1. And uh, last week we started the book of Genesis. And we, just to highlight some of the things that we talk about, we said that the book, Genesis, uh, it means beginning. So Genesis, it's a book of beginnings. And there's a lot of things that begin in the book of Genesis. We mentioned some of those things last week. And last week we talked about um, where God created. God created the heavens and the earth, the universe. And uh, the word there for create is bara. And we also said that the only person who can create is God. Man cannot create. God is the one that bara the whole universe. And everything was created by him. And also we said that before uh, God create, there was nothing. There was no pre-existing matter or material. And God create from nothing and because there was no nothing no existing material was existing before God create and uh, the universe that we are seeing today was created by God and uh, he is the one that caused everything to come into being so today we'll pick up from verse 6 as we continue in our study it, it says and God said, let there be a foment in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the foment and divide the waters which were under the foment from the waters which were above the foment and it was so. And God called the foment heaven and the evening and the morning were the second day. So according to what we understand from, you know, the beginning, the whole earth or the whole of God's creation was filled with water and uh, the Lord he caused a separation or a division to take place and he separated the waters and according to what the Bible is telling us he placed um, certain section of the waters above and certain section below and last week we were talking about uh, the waters that was placed above and Bible uh, interpreters, they call it a canopy. It was like, you know, the Lord placed a dome over the whole earth. And that dome was filled with water. It was a water canopy. And uh, what Bible interpreters are saying, the water canopy that was placed there by the Lord, that was the reason why life existence was a lot longer than we are experiencing today. If you notice, uh, before um, the flood, we have uh, people used to live a very long time. I think uh, Methuselah, he lived close to a thousand years. And after the flood, uh, that water canopy that was placed there, that was causing um, you know, uh, men to live such a long time because I guess it was protecting them from... Um, the sun and different things that comes from out of space. And uh, because, of, because they were sheltered by this water canopy, men used to live that long period of time. 
But when the flood came, the water canopy was broken. And uh, that's the reason why the, the flood waters uh, were able to cover the whole earth. And we were saying that God in his wisdom, he knew that there was going to be a flood. Because the flood wasn't a surprise to God. When men rebel against God, that wasn't a, a surprise. So God had already put all of that in place. And uh, when the time for the flood, the Bible tells us that the fountains of the deep was broken up. And the heavens was opened up. And uh, the water descended. And the whole earth was covered. And as we said last time, there are some people who are saying that uh, Noah's flood was not a universal flood. They say it was a local flood. But this wasn't a local flood. This was a universal flood that covers the whole universe. And also we commented last week, you know, I was saying, I was adding my, um, you know, what I think by looking at what I saw happen with the flood. I was saying that I believe that because the Lord already said that he's not going to destroy this world by water and this world is going to be destroyed by fire. I said just the way how God resolved the waters and for the flood also he resolved the fire that is going to destroy this world. Is This morning while we was coming in we were talking about the volcano that is in the sea just off of Grenada. I think it's what, Kick Up Ginny? <laughs> and um, they said that this volcano is one of the biggest in the whole world. If you do some research on it, Kick Up Ginny, you know, maybe we don't really hear much about it because it's just he lied or she lied down there or whatever you want to call it. Lied down there and it just, you know, there and uh, every 10 years it probably might just give some activities. But what they're saying is one of the most dangerous volcano in the whole world and you know I believe that the Lord have everything in place so when he ready to close this world up as Peter tells us that he will send his holy angels who will cut the four corners of this world and he's going to fold it up as a scroll as an old sheet and uh, what we are seeing today the Bible said it will be set on fire by God so you know I believe that God he know exactly what he's doing so we, we see that when the waters was divided and all of the things that the Lord said here, he did it all for a purpose. And that purpose was fulfilled. Now, in verse 8, he said, And God called the formed heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. Now, we didn't mention this before, but now we will mention it because we come to where it said evening and morning. If you notice... Um, evening comes before morning. And that's how the Lord seems to um, check it. You know, in our time, we say morning and evening. But in God's, um, on God's uh, calendar, he counted as evening and morning. And that's the same way the Jewish people um, calculate their day. Their, their Jewish days start from sunset. Check one, yeah, two. The, the Jewish day is from sunset to sunset. And uh, it seems as though this is the same um, pattern that the Lord is using here. Another thing that we could uh, mention here is that um, some people are saying that this, when the Bible talks about evening and morning was the first day or the second day, what they're saying here, one day represents a long time period of time they are saying there are some bible believing people and some of these people who believe that the the earth is billions of billions of years old what they are saying is that the day represent a long span of time that can you know go into billions of years and uh, they are doing this especially the people who believe that the earth is billions of billions of years old, they are doing that so that they can have time um, or to, you know, to, to prove their case. But when the Bible tells us that the evening and the morning was the first day or the second day, the day here represents a 24-hour period. It's not billions upon billions of years. I remember about, you know, maybe 50, 60 years ago, they used to say that the earth is 2 billion years. 
Now they are saying that the earth is what? About 10 billion? And that is within uh, 50 or 60 years. It seems as though the earth really age because right now it's about maybe 12, maybe 15 billion. Maybe some people have it more older than that. But we have to take it as the word of God say. The word of God is putting it here as a day. He counts it from evening to morning. And he said the evening, from the evening to the morning, the Lord called that the second day. So that was a 24-hour period. You know, we have in the Bible when he talks about the day of the Lord. We know the day of the Lord is a, a period of time. We also know that the day of judgment is going to be a period of time, not going to be one day. And uh, when we talk here in the book of Genesis and he talk about evening and morning was the first day or the second day, it is talking about a 24-hour period of time. Praise the Lord. Now in verse 9, he tells us, And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. So um, we saw... Um, back earlier in uh, the book of Genesis that um, the Lord said, let there be light, and there was light. Praise the Lord. No, I think I'm, I'm jumping ahead. Let me just read over um, verse 9. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. This is the one I have to deal with. Now, we are talking about the Lord is causing the waters uh, to separate from the earth and the Lord is causing a separation to take place. He's causing um, the, the, the waters to go into a specific place and he's causing dry land to appear in a specific place. And uh, we could just imagine that seems to be it was a climatic event that took place when the Lord caused this separation to take place. It is believed that is when all of the mountains, some of the mountains was created, some of the hills and the valley was created, the lower area of the, 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 the earth, that is where the Lord allowed the waters to gather. So all of the, um, as these, we have this upheaval that took place. It had to be that there was an upheaval that take place. And uh, the, 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 we have the hills, the mountains, we have the valleys and all of these areas. So the water, because... part of the earth, the lower parts. And uh, so the Lord caused, he said, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. So um, what we are seeing here also is that when the Lord separate the waters and cause dry land to appear, all of the water go in one place. And all of the dry land also was in one place. And what a lot of people are saying is that in the beginning at that time, the whole earth was one land mass. Meaning that the whole earth, all the continents was connected together. Uh, I think what they're saying is that if you take a look of uh, um, the world map or the globe, uh, you will see um, the map is like a jigsaw puzzle. And what they're saying, you know, there are people who try, who try to put it back together. And what they're saying, all of these... Uh, the whole map seems to match together when they bring everything back together. And what is believed is that when the Lord created um, the heavens and the earth, when he caused the dry land to go by itself and the waters to go by itself, the whole earth was one land mass. And I, I believe that. Is yesterday I was looking up on, on the internet. I was trying to find out if you can travel from Canada by car or by land and reach down to Venezuela and apparently you can you know um, it's a trip I would like to take but some people say it's very dangerous you know by land you could travel from here and you could end up all the way down to Venezuela and and uh, it, it's uh, you know it's true so it seems it seems according to scripture when God caused these water the water and the land to go in its own place. It seems like the whole area, uh, the dry land was one land mass and all the, the sea area and all of the different lakes, all of those was in one area by itself. 
So it seemed as though all of that was set in place from the beginning. The Lord did that from the beginning. In verse 10, it said, And God called the dry land earth, and the, the gathering together of the waters called he sees. And God saw that it was good. So here we see that God is naming and he's calling the dry land earth, calling the, um, the waters called he sees. And by naming here, it means that God is, he, he, he is using his authority. When you name something, it means that you take authority. And uh, God is showing us here that he's the one who is in charge. And he's the one that given names to these things. And from the creation up to now, the land, earth have the same name. Nobody can change that name. Nobody can change uh, the, the name of the sea. You know, all of these names that was given by the Lord, they're still in existence because he is the one that created them. And he is the creator. He owns them. Praise the Lord. And I love what he said at the end of verse 10. He said, and, and God saw that it was good. In other words, these things, these works that the Lord performing, they were pleasing to him. They were perfect. They were well done. They didn't need any adjustment. Everything was placed in the right setting. And God was pleased with what um, was performed. He saw that it was good. In verse 11, and God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed and the fruit trees, tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was good. So here we see that the Lord... Uh, he caused these, um, uh, the earth to bring forth grass. All of that going through the mic, all of that. Um, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed. So the grass came forth mature and Well, when the, when the earth was created, well, if you go back to verse two, he said that the earth was the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon. We okay? And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now, after God created, um, he borrowed, in the beginning he borrowed. As I said last week, that the, the earth was like a shell. It was like a shell, or it was, when, when the Lord created, um, the earth was in a, it was at the beginning state. He began his work from rune. It seems as though the Lord created from that state and that was the starting point from where the Lord was going to work from. And at that time, the whole earth was filled with water and darkness. And uh, the Lord um, went further and he said, let there be light. So yes, the earth was filled with darkness and uh, it's the Lord that caused light to come forth. And uh, if you remember, we saw where he separated the, the darkness he, he, by bringing light, he separated darkness from light. So yes, the earth was filled with darkness. But, but Pastor, what, what I'm saying here, okay, like if the earth was in darkness, mm -hmm. right? The earth is in the universe, right? Up, which means, okay, the universe, so the universe um, is supposed to have light itself. Because if the earth is inside, the, the, the earth is inside the universe. So the point I'm making or the distinction, if the universe was also in darkness... And the earth was also in darkness, which is the world. Well, you see, well, before, before mm. God caused light to come in, mm. everything was in darkness. Because when he said God created um, the heavens and the earth, the universe is also included in that. So, so before God called mm. light to come into existence, everything, earth, 
everything that was there was in darkness. So God himself was existing in darkness. No, I, I'm not going to say that because God is light. You can't say that. God is light. The Bible said <laughs> yeah. God is light in him. In, in no, him, there is no um, darkness at all. You know, as I said before, as I said before, even before God created the heavens and the earth, God existed. And uh, it is called eternity past. And nobody can tell how long eternity past was. Nobody, there's no, uh, nobody can calculate and say, well, eternity past was a billion years or how, ma how much years. Eternity, in eternity, it got no um, um, limit where time is concerned. But God exists in eternity past. And but, wherever God is, God is light. But, but that's the point I'm saying. So well, that's what I'm saying. If the, if the universe itself, the universe is the entire thing. A God is in the universe itself. But, but, you see, what, what, but what, what, I'm, what I'm saying now, if, if, if the earth was in darkness, well, that shows the universe had to be in darkness too because it's not creating light. Brother Lewis, yeah. God is outside of the universe. He is not... God, you can't, we can't really see God as somebody who is a part of the universe. God is he's outside because he's the one that created the universe. He wasn't, um, you know, God didn't come into existence with the universe. So, God, what, so what is the universe then? Well, the universe is what we are seeing. Uh, you know, we, we're not seeing all of it. The earth is a part of it. Well, the universe, the universe means everything. The universe means what? Yeah, it means everything. The universe means everything. Well, the universe, the earth is included in the universe. Mm -hmm. Which you have no limit. The universe have no limit, no end. No limit, no end. Well... Well, <laughs> yeah, no limit. We no don't. We, we, mm -hmm. we, you know, we, we only know about what we are seeing here on Earth. <laughs> you know, um, there are some people who um, went out of space. I, you know, I don't know if I'll want to go because, you know, just to fly down to Grenada, fly down to St. Vincent, I'm having a hard time doing it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I'll want to go in space. But there are people who went up in space, and according to what they tell us, there are other things that exist up there, and we, we have to take their word for it. So the universe is vast. But you see, that some of these things we can't, we ought not to try to entangle our minds with some of these things. Because that's, what, that's the reason why I said when we start the study, if you can't believe the, 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 the first four words in the book of Genesis, when it said, in the beginning God created. If you can't take that and swallow that, there are other things, other parts of the Bible, you're not going to be able to swallow it. And uh, that's the reason why some of these things that, you know, Brother Lewis probably have in his mind, some of these things we have to just believe it and trust the Lord. And some of these things don't really have any answers to them. Like somebody will ask a question, or little children ask a question, where God came from. Anybody know what God, where God came from? No. You know, God, uh, he, 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 he he existed eternally, and there is no end, there is no beginning to him. So, you know, questions like those, it's useless for us to fight ourselves with some of these questions. You know, some people ask, where did Cain get his wife, and all of these, um, you know, different kind of questions you hear people just ask, and, you know, build, you know, set of but, arguments. But, 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 Pastor, I do believe when we when we come into we talk we call them Christian education, mm -hmm. Christian education, so we call it um, Sunday school. Right. But when you come in, when we have um, Sunday school, is that's where you be, you begin to learn to increase your knowledge because certain things that you don't know, you will ask questions. So so this is why we have Sunday school. It's not anything to get anybody confused or anything. Like that. All of us want to learn. So some yeah. things that we expect that when we ask questions, that some people have answers. Yeah. Well, yes, we, we try yeah. to answer. We try to answer. But, but there are some things that we don't really have some answers for. For instance, when you, if a person starts asking questions before the creation and try to ask us what was there before the creation, you know, if I try to tell anybody what was there before the creation, I'll be a fool. I'll be a liar. Nobody know what was there before the creation. All we could say is that before the creation, it was eternity. And uh, there is no time. You can't really give a... a, a, a a specific time span to say how long eternity was. You know, like what Brother Lewis asked in here, you know, um, well, he, he asked the question, if the whole universe was in darkness. The answer to that is yes. You know, yes, the whole universe was in darkness. But that doesn't mean because the whole universe was in darkness 
God was also in darkness. God is never in darkness. The Bible answered that question. It said God is light. And in him there is no darkness at all. You know, no darkness at all in the Lord. All right, I, I hope that um, satisfy you, brother. Where, 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 what, where we are now? Verse 11. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit trees yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. So apparently the grass came forth fully mature. The grass came forth with seeds within it. All of the herbs yielding seed within it and the fruit trees, they came forth and they came forth mature. And according to what we are reading here, according to what I'm understanding here, when the Lord caused these trees to come forth, they didn't come, come forth as little baby trees. They came forth and they came forth ready to, um, for people to eat. When these trees came forth, they have... Um, um, seed within them also they came forth, some of them have um, I guess they have fruits on them uh, it's the same thing with Adam when Adam was um, created by the Lord Adam, God didn't create Adam like a little baby when Adam was created, Adam was a, a mature man you know, he probably was, you know, if we have to put age, I would say he was he was, you know, maybe a teenager but he, was, he wasn't a baby you know, he was a mature, God created Adam, and Adam was a mature person when he was created. And uh, it's the same thing that these um, plants, when they came forth, they, 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 they were mature. And I believe, I believe that these plants came forth and they have fruits on them. They were ready to be, um, you know, harvest or ready for people to, um, to partake of. Praise the Lord. In verse 12, and the earth brought forth grass and Herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was so. Uh, very important for us to notice there that um, all of these things, they came forth and they're producing seed um, after their kind. You mean that every, God, God put a division or he put a limitation on all of these um, plants that was coming forth. That he called forth out of the earth. And uh, they couldn't cross that line. All the plants. They have to produce. After their kind. And it will be the same thing too. When we come down to the animals. We will see that the Lord. Um, caused them to come forth. And they have to produce after their kind. They couldn't cross over into a, another kind. Like what we have. Um, scientists telling us today. That man and ape. And monkey and all of these. Animals they from the same um, kind. Man is from a kind all by himself. Amen. And uh, ape can cross over into the line of man. Right. Man can cross over into the line of ape. Yeah. Why? Because God set the limit. He put boundaries. Praise the Lord. I'm so glad that the Lord, he put um, boundaries on these things. Because especially in a time like this that we are living in. Although they believe that there are some scientists out there who are trying to cross the line, you know, to cause, you know, a reproduction to take place by going over the, these lines. But we are so glad that the Lord have checks and balances in place. And he said that these uh, trees, these fruit, the, 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 the grass and all of those things that came forth, they have to produce according to their kind. And at the end of the verse again, he said, and God saw that it was good. So the Lord, when he caused these things to come forth, they came forth and they were perfect. They didn't need any improvement, no adjustment. Everything was the way how God expected it to be. In verse 13, and the evening and the morning were the third day. So we have the evening and the morning here. The Bible says it was the third day. And as I said before, this was a 24-hour period. This wasn't a long period period of time, like some um, interpreters will tell you, you know, is it could be billions of years, uh, evening and morning representing here, but we know that according to scripture, it is talking about a 24-hour period. Verse 14, and God said, let there be light in the formant of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for season and for days and years. So we know 
that light already existed because God had already called light into being all your parts in um, the narrative that we are dealing with. But here we see that the Lord is going to set up light in the heavens. He's going to set light in the heavens and in the foment in the heaven and uh, to divide the day from the night. And uh, some people are finding it difficult to, um, um, you know, understand or to swallow um, what we are dealing with here. Because if you're noticing here, um, night and day was not called into existence or God did not set up uh, the night and day cycle from the beginning. And some people having problem saying, well, um, you know, um, the sun and the moon was not uh, in existence from the beginning. And what they're saying is that light couldn't be existing from the beginning if there was no sun and moon. But as we said before, God is light. And uh, last week, I think we make reference to in the new Jerusalem, in the, new, in the millennium to come, in eternity. We are not going to have the sun and the moon. Sun and the moon is not going to be there shining to give us light. Who is going to be the light? God himself, God himself is going to be the light. So, you know, if God himself, God don't need um, the sun and the moon, you know, for him to have light. God himself is light. And the Bible said in him there is no darkness at all. So here we see that God is going to set up the sun and the moon. And the sun and the moon is being set up the fourth day. And as I mentioned last week, I believe that the Lord have his purpose for doing this. If God did bring sun and moon at the beginning, you know, when he created the universe. Although we have people who is worshipping the sun and the moon today. More people would have find more evidence to worship the sun and the moon because the first thing they were going to say is that is the sun and the moon that cause life to come into existence, to cause um, you know, the animals to come into existence, to cause man to come into existence but God did not set up the sun and the moon at the beginning the sun and the moon was here uh, going to be set up on the fourth day, praise the Lord so um it tells us and the law in 14, and God said, let there be light in the foment of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for season and for days and years. So here we see that these two um, things that the Lord is setting up, the sun and the moon, they have their purposes. And uh, the Bible says it's supposed to divide the day from the night. Sun and the moon divide the day from the night. You know, God is so powerful, eh? Look at all of the things that are going on in the world today. Man can't change the time of night. Night has to come. It doesn't matter how much light we turn on. Night still has to come. It doesn't matter what we do. The day is still going to come. Because God has already set this up. And uh, the sun and the moon is what caused these things to be um, separated. Uh, God put the sun and the moon up there so that they can separate the night from the day. Praise the Lord. Divide the day from the night and let them be for signs. Now, it mentioned that they're supposed to be for signs, you know, and seasons. Now, when you talk about signs here, I guess we can deal with the weather, you know, is by the sun and the moon they determine weather condition. Is by the sun or the moon. Back in the olden days, people used to um, know what time it is. Even today, there are people who can um, just look at the sun and see what position the sun in is in, and they're able to tell you what time it is. Uh, the sun and the moon, you know, well, the sun especially can uh, do for that. And he talks about it, it is there for sign. Now, also, the sun and the moon is as is a sign. To us as human beings, as God's creation, God's um, representative on earth, the sun and the moon is there um, even if somebody don't hear the me message of salvation, the gospel message preached to them. By looking at these um, heavenly bodies that the Lord set up there, according to what Psalms tell, tell us, 
we can know by looking at them that there is a God. That there is somebody who is existing, who is bigger than man, who is above man, who is a creator. Also, the sun and the moon was placed there by God to um, tell us about judgment. In, the, in, in times to come, the Bible tells us the sun and the moon will be darkened. The, 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 the moon will be turned into blood. You know what that represents? It's judgment. So these things is not there. They have specific purposes. God has purposes the way he put them there. And also he said that they are there for also seasons. It's by the sun, it's by these um, things, the sun and the moon that we determine season. You know, different season. Israel was told by God that they have to worship him, you know, and in certain times, certain season, on the Sabbath day, you know, and all of these kind of things. And it's when uh, it's through the sun and the moon, they used to determine these things. When uh, the Sabbath, you know, come in or, and, uh, they, and, and these things, Israel determined when the, the right season um, supposed to be. Also, season here also, I think, deal with the planting and the harvest season. You know, and the Bible tells us there's a time to plant, there's a time to harvest. You know, I was asking my wife, it is, if, it's, if it is wrong for a person to use the farmer's almanac. You know, some people wouldn't plant unless the almanac say, well, this is a good day to plant. And whatever. I, I was asking her if that um, will be wrong in where the Bible is concerned. But I don't think so. Because the Bible talks about um, they, the, the sun and the moon is there for, to determine season. So I don't really think that it's anything wrong if you want to plant uh, your seed in a certain season. Or you want to harvest uh, at a certain, certain season. But also, they are there to divide days and years. One minute, Go ahead. Okay, look at part. I get the mic. Get the mic. Look at the other part of creation. When God created the earth, right? Yeah. He said that everything ought to be to its kind. So at that time, when when you read there that He didn't create the the, 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 the heaven body as yet, when He had created the um, the seeds and all this thing and them. So, mm. so I want to believe that this thing will function by, although men a lot of, a lot of people get themselves carried away. And you, just as the Egyptians, because they took the same signs of this, the same kind of farmers all like that is, is in the pyramid. So most of them are using the same sign today. But God already created this thing for we to um, use them to survive. God has separated this thing by itself. Right. Because a lot of people get carried away and they start worshiping these things, and that created a big problem. Right. Well, that point is well taken. And, uh, you know, I'm glad that you, you brought that up. Um, because this is not really given any cre credence to um, astrology because people say well you know um, the bible said that we're supposed to um, uh, by the sun and the moon we can determine season and signs for different things and that could lead a person into um, astrology and then they start talking about uh, horoscope and all of these different kind of things as, as the elder said right rightly that is not the area that god is really talking about when he talk about um, signs and season it is limited to some of these things that I just mentioned. It's not really going over into um, astrology and, you know, where people believe in worshipping uh, the sun and worshipping the moon. You know, because I, we know that the, the sun and the moon, they are powerful. They are powerful, but they are not to be worshipped. The sun and the moon, they are servants of God. Amen. If you notice, God give them their job to do. You know, I, when you look at um, all of the um, creation of God... The earth was created by God, and the earth have its job to do. The earth is supposed to produce, you know, fruits, you know, things for us to eat and all of that. And if you notice, the earth is very faithful in doing whatever God called it to do. Look at the animals. The animals, they were, um, they were called into existence by God for a specific purpose. And they are doing what they're supposed to do. Look at the sun and the moon. The sun and the moon was placed there to do a job, to serve. And uh, they are doing exactly what God call them to do. Day in and day out, they're doing what God called them to do. The only part of God creation who rebel against God are not doing what God called um, him to do. It's man. It's mankind. All of the other parts of creation fall in line and they're doing what their maker called them to do. 
but mankind is the only one that is rebelling against God, who is not compliant to what God required. And that's the reason why God had to bring judgment upon man. And because of man rebellion against God, creation, all of creation that is innocent, creation that is innocent, creation groaning. You know what the Bible tells us? Creation groaning and creation is in pain. Over all of the you know, abuse that creation is taking, all of the sinful activity that is going on in the world and all of the pollution that men release in, in uh, the universe and all of our sinful behavior that we are carry, carrying on in the universe. Creation is groaning. Creation is crying out to God for God to put an end to what is taking place here on earth. Because we are the only part of God's creation that is rebellious against God. And we are, we are harming the rest of God's creation. And the rest of God's creation crying out to God for, to rescue them. The book of Romans tells us that. Praise the Lord. Okay, so, um, so it's by the sun and the moon we know um, days and years. You know when a day is ended, you know when you come to the end of a year and all of that, all of that is determined by the sun and the moon. Now, sun and the moon, that we were talking about the moon last week, and the moon is very important. And I was trying to um, explain some of the, at least one of the things that the sun, the, the moon is doing, well, the sun and the moon is doing, you know, uh, is that the sun and the moon, they control tide. You know, the tide if it wasn't for the sun and the moon, um, the limit that the Lord placed on tide, tide movement in the sea, um, it wouldn't be there. And it, mean, it means that um, if it wasn't for the sun and the moon, the job that they are doing, uh, we'd have a lot of, the, what they're saying, some people believe that the whole earth would have been covered with water from time to time, you know, because there is no, there is no limit. And it's by the sun and the moon we have um, all these limits that we have on the, the tide. You know, I know from time to time we have tsunamis and all this kind of thing. But if it wasn't for the sun and the moon, uh, the whole place would have been just a constant um, upheaval of these things happening. Disaster after disaster. So God set these things there for a specific purpose and they're doing their job. So the sun and the moon is very important. But it's not to be worshipped. We're not supposed to worship the sun and the moon. I told you last week, last, uh, when I went to Trinidad when I was young, the first morning I got up, I went outside, I saw this lady worshipping the sun. I, I, you know, it was so shocking to me because I never saw that, you know, in St. Vincent. I saw this Indian lady worshipping um, the sun and the sun, the moon, they are not supposed to be object of worship. They are servants of God and we, supposed to, we are servants of God and everybody is supposed to serve God. In verse 15, he said, and let them be for light, lights in the format of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and it was so. So, the same purpose, what the purpose of God called these, the sun and the moon, into existence for, they came into existence, and they start doing their work. It was so. You know, they, it was not baby sun or, or baby moon. All of these things came into existence fully. Um, operational, ready to go into use. Praise God. And verse 16 tells, and God made two great lights. Greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. And the fowls of the air sorry, I missed something. Okay. Yeah, I, I have two pages together. Yeah, the night. He made the stars also. I like how he put that in there. Uh, Moses just put that little bit in there. Didn't make any set of, um, um, he didn't really um, go on about it, but he just dropped that in there that he made the stars. The stars are great. And it shows us that God made these things without, there was not such a big effort in making these things. Like God just, it, it, you know, it's like it was just something ordinary he was doing. He just, he made the stars. Praise the Lord. Amen. Who could make a star? Anybody here could make a star? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. The Lord made the stars also. In verse 17, and God set them in the format of the heaven to give light upon the earth. 
These things are so faithful. They're up there and they're doing their job, giving light upon the earth. People try to estimate how much stars is in the sky and all of these things. We don't, they don't even, sometimes they give you a certain amount and say, well, you have this amount of stars and then in the next year they come back and they change and they say, well, you know, it's a greater amount. Then somebody will come and say, well, we can't, there's no limit, you don't know how much it is. But nobody knows how much they are. Praise the Lord. Amen. And I'm glad that the Lord kept some of these um, secrets for himself. He did not allow man to, 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 to have access to some of these things because the Bible tells us that um, the things that are revealed, man, God gave man the opportunity to know and understand these things. But the things that are kept secret, God keep those secrets for himself. Praise the Lord. I think we're going to have to close there because we already gone past the time. Um, any question or any comment that anybody would like to make? Yeah, I just want to say something small. Yes. Yeah, I've been um, look, doing some studies and I watch how the the Egyptians and the other parts, even the Western Hemisphere, how they really adapt certain things with the sun. Mm. Because they said that the sun, the earth was, was existing. But being that it was not, the sun was not yet there, that's the reason why the, the earth was in darkness. But as soon as the sun um, come, then life come. So they believe, so they have the sun as the main God, which they call the sun, Amen Ra. Mm -hmm. Amen Ra. Which means they have it as the sun as the, the main the, the main, the main um, part for, for, for all the different um, um, uh, works of nature, the eight um, ten forces of nature, they say of the sun as the main one. So they, they, say, they believe that they also call it the word atom. So they, we, we, we use in the same word, the atom. So that's what they also call the sun. So that was, okay. the, that was the name of the sun god. And today we call it here, spring, summer, after winter. So they have this, 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 the sun as the main thing to give um, life or not everything. So what you call it, the atomic bomb. That is where they get the idea to make the atomic bomb. Because they get all the different sources. They also call it now the, um, the um, um, hiccup-tart, which they on more move. So they, they, they get to realize, okay, that if they get uranium, so they say, so they say God sit up on uranium. So once they get God to, um, to, to, get to, to get his atom, to split the atom, then God move. So that's how they get to make the, um, the atomic bomb from the sun. But, you know, it, that's the reason why um, man will, not, will have no excuse when they stand before God. Because, you see, they're using these um, things as object of worship, to worship them. And God make it clear that these things is not to be worshipped. These things are servants. And God will hold man accountable for these things because it is so clear, it is so clear written in the word of God. And most of these people who are um, talking about, like what Brother Diela was talking about there, where they um, esteem, highly esteem the son uh, to be, um, you know, their God. Most of these people reject what is written in the Bible. Yeah, the son is the main one. Yeah, and because they reject what is written in the Bible, the Bible even tells us that. That, uh, you know, if, if you don't want to believe the truth, it, it's going to send them strong delusion. And when the strong delusion come, they're gonna, they, they, their ears is going to be more inclined to a lie than the truth. In other words, a lie is going to be more palatable to them. Their stomach is going to digest or their, their, their minds will digest a lie more than the truth. And the truth in the Bible is so simple. God put it so simple in the word of God that, you know, any child who can... Uh, read and understand, will understand what Genesis is saying to us. God didn't put it in a highfalutin kind of way. Is men who try to mix things up and try to, you know, put in their own thing and get things so complicated and so confused. And that's the reason why, brethren, we have to stick to what the Word of God say. You know, um, I like to read books. I read a lot of books. But a lot of the books that I read is not to you know, for me to change my mind. It's not going to change my mind on what I believe um, about the Bible. A lot of things that I read outside the Bible, it is just for reference. You know, I use those for reference and I say, well, this book said this and this is what the Word of God said. But we, we ought not to allow what is outside of the Word of God, that is not scriptural based, to influence us and to draw us away because... There's so much out there now. There's so, all kinds of 
information, everything, every truth that you find in the Bible, there is something out there that is, that is going to combat it. That is going to try to prove that this is not true. So, brethren, we have to stand on the word of God. The word of God had to be, that's the reason why I believe in spending more time studying the word of God and studying other material. That's what I'm saying. This is the original. When you study the original, when the fake come along, you're able to identify the fake. I told you guys a, a while back, a few times now, that um, the American government and the Canadian government who train in their agents to spot um, counterfeit bills, to detect counterfeit bills. What they're doing, they have these men um, set aside, these men and women, they have them set aside and all they're doing, they're watching the American dollar, watching the Canadian dollar, watching the $20, watching the, the $50 and the $100, the real thing, and they're analyzing it and they're watching it and they're watching it upside down, crossways, backways, any way they want, they're watching it and they, they familiarize, familiarize themselves with the Canadian currency and the American currency. So anytime them see a fake, because they get so accustomed knowing and seeing the original, as soon as they see a fake, maybe if their eyes close, they probably might just smell it. They, they have their eyes closed and they smell that there's a fake counterfeit dollar around because they, they get so accustomed. And it's the same thing, brethren. When we know the word of God, anytime something come up that is a counterfeit, where scripture is concerned, from the time you hear it, as soon as you hear it, it starts smelling stink. You know that there's something rotten about this. You're not going to swallow it. So my advice to us is to, yes, we have to, you know, know about other things on the outside, but make the Bible your main source of information. And if we do that, we're not going to go wrong. The Lord bless us. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Father, we want to thank you today for your words. We want to thank you for the wisdom and the knowledge that you have made available to us through Holy Scriptures. And help us there, Father God, to esteem you because we know that you are our creator. And Lord, you create us, O oh God, to worship you. And uh, Lord, help us to make you the center of our worship. We are so grateful to you, O oh God, even as we go into a time of worship and celebration. Let your spirit be poured out upon us, we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, your son. Amen.